Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Knoll. This is the Progressive Commentary Hour. Today, a special original short documentary. It's only 31 minutes long, but it took 35 years to get to this point. A little background. During the early stages of the war on AIDS, we were led to believe that an HIV virus was the single and only cause of AIDS, and that once you were tested with an antibody test and you tested positive, it would be a relatively short period of time between infection and death. Uh, Several years later, they developed a drug called AZT, and that was the drug of choice. In fact, if you went to meetings of support meetings for AIDS, there were signs that says, put time on your side, take AZT. During this period of time, I was studying everything I could on the subject of AIDS, and I believed and supported the HIV equals AIDS equals death hypothesis. But when I looked closer, and when I started to speak with physicians and scientists in the field, something just didn't add up. If a person was immunocompromised, so severe was the compromise to the person's immune system, wouldn't it make sense then to build up the immune system? Now, at no time did I tell people don't take AZT. To the contrary, whatever they chose to take, they should be allowed to take. In fact, at a press conference at the Walter Reed Theater in New York City at Lincoln Center, I suggested exactly that, saying, I'm not opposed to you taking any drug that you and your physician feel will benefit you. But I am opposed to limiting it to just drugs. I believe we should open up to any other therapy that has a reasonable chance to build up your immune system and give you a longer life. There was a lot of controversy at the time. But there was cooperation among many of the different activists within the gay community. So I began first at 84th Street and Riverside Drive in a brownstone where I lived and had my offices, and we had the first tri-state medical healing center there. We had physicians, board-certified physicians, nurses, and a lot of the people were suffering from AIDS-defining illnesses. My job was to create protocols that would build their immune system and put time on their side. It worked. In fact, after two years, we had dozens and dozens of individuals who, for all intents and purposes, should have been dead. They were not taking easy too, though many at first did, but more often than not, we would hear how sick they became by taking it. But we were doing all humanly possible to eliminate viruses and bacteria, not just HIV, but cytomegalovirus, human herpes 6, Uh, Epstein-Barr virus and bacteria and to heal their body and there was a massive protocol for this and it worked. I would go on to 72nd Street and Broadway to carry on the Tri-State Healing Center being able to have a larger space to help even more people. At no time did I charge a penny for any of my efforts and even got the people who had full-blown AIDS to be treated for free. It wasn't free to me, but it was to them. We were so successful that several years later, we had a press conference, and it was by a professional public relations firm that sent out the notices to every AIDS group and AIDS foundation, to all the major media. Not a single person showed up. We still held the press conference, And last week, I played one hour of that press conference on the air. We then had a press conference at the Walter Reed Theater. Again, the media was packed, but the media was not there. We always had an open-door policy, meaning that any physician, scientist, nurse, anyone involved in AIDS could come in there and speak with the patients and with the permission of the patients, see their records. And again, We were always having visitors. Dr. Robert Cathcart, a board-certified physician from California treating people with AIDS, came there and spent almost two weeks every day. Now, we were open from 8 in the morning till midnight, and he was there most of that time. He was so convinced of the value of the protocols that I had designed and was implementing 
that he took the protocol back to California and notified me almost a year and a half later that not one of his patients with AIDS had died. And he was able to overcome Kaposi's sarcoma and pneumocystis crinia pneumonia, the f- first and second of the major killing diseases in the AIDS uh, epidemic. What you're about to see now are just examples, not by any means all the footage we have or testimonials. You're going to see patients who have reversed AIDS and gone seronegative, meaning from HIV positive to negative. You're going to see people who've tried other modalities, natural modalities, who were able to thrive in their health. You're going to hear from members of our medical team. You're also going to see people within the mainstream media, but who are African American, who did their homework. They came, they looked at the records, met the patients, and were finally convinced that this was newsworthy and invited me and the patients on the air to share the stories. Now, put this in context. No one in mainstream media has been able to report that a person who had full-blown AIDS recovered all their health, overcame all their opportunistic infections, and went HIV negative. We can say that, and this is the proof. And yet at the same time that I was doing this, there was a battle going over about who was going to control the war on AIDS. We had nothing to do with that. But they only wanted to allow a pharmaceutical drug-based approach Any other approach, they rejected. Even though we were getting results, they weren't. So this is a positive story of just 31 minutes, a proof positive of what we were able to do with over 1,200 people who came to the Tri-State Healing Center with full-blown AIDS and were able to thrive, reverse those opportunistic infections, and in some cases, seroconvert. What you're about to see is good news in the war on AIDS. Today, when we look back over 35 years of this war on AIDS, we see that many of the things they stated were not true. Once you're diagnosed with a proper gold standard test, then you're going to die of AIDS. It's just how long can we keep you alive with antiretrovirals? None of the people I know deny AIDS. None deny HIV. Some challenge whether or not HIV by itself is causing 30 conditions, others believe they're cofactors. Looking back, I have been able to see that lifestyle modification, including a really healthy plant-based diet, intelligent and proper supplementation, holistic therapies such as vitamin C drips, ozone, humanistic psychotherapy, exercising, and a very powerful positive immune modulating protocol was able to take people with full-blown AIDS and HIV infection and return them to a state of health. Gary No, who says he can now offer evidence that people diagnosed with, quote, AIDS who have turned to a non-toxic lifestyle also return to good health. I'm Tony Brown. In a moment, good news about AIDS and HIV. This man has been helped. I brought two other people on your show three years ago. They're both alive and well and continue to remain seroconverted. Now let's talk about this man. Uh, This man, you say, uh, is the benefactor of your protocol. Yes. All right, now we're going to ask him his experience. Then I'd like for you to describe what the protocol was uh, that helped him uh, become convert from... Could I mention one thing? Please. I'm sure many people watching, including doctors, are saying, this is nonsense. Well, first, I have no proprietary interest. I've never charged anyone a nickel. That is correct. In fact, in my entire career as a nutritionist and as a health educator, 
I've never charged a single patient one penny. I have nothing to sell them. I have nothing to make. In fact, when I give my time and energy, it's for free, so it's not proprietary. Secondly, I could just say that this person's been improved, and who's to know otherwise? But you have in your hands medical documents. He has had blood workup done every six months for eight years. So we have before, during, and after blood workups showing from AIDS, not just HIV infection, from AIDS, and one guy who couldn't be here this morning, he's stuck in traffic, we just found out, um, and at some other time you might want to interview him, he had 22 different life-threatening illnesses. He had endocarditis, he had encephalitis, he had Kaposi sarcoma, he had pneumocystis cranial pneumonia, he was in St. Vincent's Hospital near death on several occasions, and today he is completely healthy also. Now, you were with him, you, you know him, you've seen his records, I have his records. So I would only make statements about people that I have their medical records that are open for people, any, any people well, I want asked to see you, it. I asked Al uh, and you to bring medical records along today so whatever statements are made, I would have evidence uh, and presenting them to this audience uh, that there was some type of paper trail, medical right. paper trail in terms of what you're stating. Now, Al, uh, you, have, you were diagnosed with what is called AIDS in 1989. That's correct. Tell us about yourself. Uh, do you have any idea what caused your immune deficiency? Yes, uh, I was an uh, intravenous drug user uh, back in the early 80s. I must have made contact with the AIDS virus maybe probably 14 years ago. I s stopped using drugs over 10 years ago, intravenous drugs. Was this after you were diagnosed uh, with AIDS? A little before. I was diagnosed, I stopped using drugs. Then two years uh, after, I went for a doctor's checkup. Doctor advised me to uh, take a HIV test because I had a uh, swollen lymph nodes glands. Swollen lymph, yes. lymph node? Yes, uh -huh. and also I was losing some weight. Uh, I was getting weak. So I took the uh, HIV test and it uh, turned out to be positive. So I uh, panicked. I said, wow, I don't want to die. I'm very young. How old were you? Uh, I was like 30, 32 years old. Anyway, uh, I said, I don't want to die. So I uh, started you know, going to the doctors. And uh, the doctor says, well, I took a uh, blood test. My, uh, my uh, T cell count was, uh, was at 800. So that's, that's, that's a pretty good uh, T-cell count. 800. Mm -hmm. So uh, right away he says, take this, uh, well, we're going to give you a prescription of uh, ACT. I said, but, you know, from what I gather, I think I'm pretty healthy still to take these toxic uh, drugs that, you know, you're prescribing me. So uh, I, st I just started, like, doing some research. And uh, Dr. Noll was on the air. One, one, one day I was listening to him. There was so much information he was giving out as far as alternative approaches to uh, like AIDS and, and any other uh, diseases we how, get. How long uh, did you stay on AZT? Well, I, the, he did prescribe me the AZT drug, and I did take it for like uh, a week or two. So you didn't use I it very long? No, I took it for a week or two because I started getting sick off of it. I started getting like blurry vision and I, I started, my body was starting to change. I felt something like taking over my system. Did you get uh, 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 your CD4 count, your blood count after you took the AZT? No, this was before. But after, after you did take it, did, yes. you, uh, did, did your blood count, yes, did your count go down, CD4 yes, count? Yes, it did. Go, what it, 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 what did, did it go, go down up. to? As a matter of fact, it went down to 600 then. Went from, 800, of, went from 800 to 600? Yeah. It, it, in, in a short period of time? In a short period of time. So uh, I, I just didn't feel good. It just didn't, my body just, I was being drawn. So I, anyway, I, I put the drug in, just put it in the garbage can. I just didn't want to take that. Now, after felt, you uh, got with Dr. Uh, no, uh, and you then got involved in his program using his protocol. Yes. Now, what what happened to you health-wise after you got involved in his program? Well, right after I started doing his protocol, my lymph nodes went down. Now they're completely normal. 
they're down. I don't feel anything. I had them like for years. How long have they been down? Uh, four years. Four years? Four years, yes. Yeah, they, and how long did it take after you started the, the program with Dr. No before they went down? It took me about a good six to eight months mm -hmm. since they started. I started like detoxifying my, my, my system and uh, I just uh, improved my health improved. I started, I gained weight for one and uh, I feel great right now. Now these are medical records you brought with you today. That's right. You have 12 copies of my medical records there. What do these medical records Well, one prove? is a PCR test. PCR test indicates the viral low level, uh, HIV viral low level. Uh, it's negative. What and does that mean? That means that there is no HIV virus in my system. It's out. They, they can't it can't detect it in a blood test. There are many tests that he's taken. It's not just one test. I ask individuals to test uh, when they're at this level almost every two to three months uh, for at least a year. And the reason I do this is because other physicians and public health officials should know that there's good science in the alternative perspective. And it may not be a therapy that they're familiar with because they're just not trained in it. But if the results are positive and you can document them and you have good medical blood workups, I mean the blood workups are done at all the standard labs and uh, the physicians are all board certified physicians who are actually overseeing and administering the actual therapy, then either they say yes or no. But I went one step further. Uh, two years ago, I decided to get all the patients I could find in the country, not just ones I've helped but any doctor's help. So I called over 600 physicians and I asked them, do you have any patients that you've treated using alternative non-toxic therapies for AIDS? And many did. And I had a press conference in New York City. Uh, we had the scientists, the physicians, and the patients with their medical records, all of which had been pre-reviewed to make sure they met the criteria of having had AIDS, not just HIV infection, but AIDS, and had made major progress, not necessarily to the degree of, of this man, uh, and others where they've actually seroconverted, meaning you cannot find, not only can you not find any HIV in his body now, you can't find antibodies. On our last program on the subject of AIDS, we talked with Steve Atkins, a former HIV positive patient who, according to health department records, has converted to negative. He was introduced to us by nutritionist journalist uh, Gary Null, who was instrumental in Atkins' AIDS treatment. And once again this morning, we're joined by Mr. Null and a HIV positive couple we want to keep their true identities a secret, so we're going to call them uh, Joan and Jack. And later, we'll be joined by Michael Elner. He's the head of a group called HEAL, a group set up to help AIDS patients. Welcome. Thank Harry. you, Bill. Uh, the last time we were here, of course, we had Mr. Atkins on, and uh, he showed his record, and, uh, and things sort of just popped loose since then. We've been getting a lot of phone calls. But before we get into this, this, uh, this interview with, uh, with our other guests today, I'd like to get your view of uh, the latest breakthrough, the headlines uh, in the papers this week. What breakthrough? I mean, we're not in the ice ages. This is an embarrassment. And unfortunately, this is exactly the kind of propaganda that the media has allowed to perpetuate as if this is the most exciting thing happening. Why didn't the media cover the story that ozone in vitro, same test tube, kills the AIDS virus? Linus Pauling's Institute of Virology uh, showed that vitamin C can kill the AIDS virus, uh, the uh, glutathione. There are many, many different things that have been shown to do this. And I'm concerned that people will once again start looking for a drug combination and forget that we have live human bodies who have gone from having AIDS to normal, who've been HIV positive, who've never converted into AIDS, and who have gone from HIV positive to seronegative. I have two of those here. Now this should make a headline. This won't get any attention. But in a test tube, suddenly that makes headlines. To me, that's absurd. Get to our guests today. Uh, we'll call them Jack and Joan because they do not want to be identified. And uh, we're going to talk to them about their conditions. And uh, then maybe you can tell us what's being done to help All right. them. Uh, to our guests who are in silhouette, Jack and Joan, when did you discover that you were HIV positive? Uh, I would say about a uh, year and a half, two years. And I might point out that you're married. You're yes. both married. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, what led to that discovery? Um, well, for a while, I was feeling sick. I was, at one time, I was using recreational drugs for a while. And um, 
For a while, I started feeling myself really uh, physically tired, uh, lost of weight. Uh, I didn't have much energy. And uh, I, I figured maybe because of my lifestyle in the past, I, I decided to take the test uh, to find out that I was positive. Mm -hmm. And uh, did your wife uh, decide to do the same thing? Did you tell her you were positive and then, then she went and took the same test? Uh, yes, I found out first, and when I found out I was positive, I, I told my wife to get tested because I had the fear that she was positive. Now, how long ago was this? This was about... About a year and a half. About a year, year and, and a half. half. Okay, and you started taking what kind of treatment? I had went to uh, a doctor, and they prescribed AZT. And I was on AZT for approximately six weeks, and uh, I didn't feel much of a change. In fact. I, I, I was still tired. I still had the weight loss. Um, I, I was hearing a lot of negative things about it, uh, as well as feeling negative things about it. And I, I had attended a seminar and decided to get off the AZT. And uh, uh, I took a nutritional route. And I just made a big change in my diet. Um, big change in my diet, big change in my lifestyle. I had cut out a lot of things. And um, it, it's, it seemed to help a lot. I started feeling a lot better. Now, what's the prognosis for both of you today? Well, uh, I just want to say that I started out, you know, the first thing they tell you to do is to have your, your cell count taken. And I, I went from a 600, which is below normal, to a 1,000, which is a, a normal cell count for anyone who is even not HIV, um, in, I guess, you know, uh, uh, less than a year. Um, I too, well, we, we went to Gary's seminar and cut out uh, everything as far as anything that would be bad for you, sugar, caffeine, drinking, smoking, um, I even stay away from passive smoke. Um, we, we just follow a very, very healthy diet and uh, I, I can honestly say I, I feel in, in well health um, and my husband went from a uh, uh, ha having like no T cells to uh, to a very positive test now that I guess Gary will uh, explain to you that uh, it's not active at all. Yes, I think we'll turn to uh, the most Sedona. important yes, thing here is this. Work it here. This is a test from Roach at Biomedical Laboratories, which is Division of Hoffman Roach. This, is, an, this is an official blood chemistry test. This shows that, and here's what's important. And this is why we're not talking about a test tube and stopping a virus in a test tube. This, these are live human beings. Their physician, using a holistic protocol, and this is a regular orthodox doctor, in a year, they, they, this person went from HIV positive, active virus, to P24 antigen test negative. Mm -hmm. HIV antibody positive. That means the HIV to have no antigen 24 means you have no active HIV active in the body. All you have is the antibody. Now, that means this person has made substantial improvement. And this should be getting some attention because it shows, and this is not the only person. There are many that, people that, like that this. That would be the question. People say, well, sometimes, you know, these things happen in isolation, so to speak. Let, let, me, let me find this. You have physicians watching right now. Any physician treating a patient with AZT and DDI and DDC, please send me any results where you have someone who tested positive using standard tests for HIV P24 antigen positive who after using those therapies after a year tested negative and also has no active viral titers and no opportunistic disease. I'd be very interested in seeing that because I haven't found any but I found many who've taken the different approach. Is that your experience? Okay, yes. my, my experience is with tens of thousands of people the reason our group focuses on alternative approaches is the people doing the best are using them. Across the board, without exception, the people who are following the advice of the media and the advice of the medical establishment are dead or dying. Our group has repeatedly seen over and over again the people who are living with AIDS and those at risk who are staying healthy are using alternative treatments to AZT, DDI, and DDC. Now, now, for someone, uh, you know, there's a lot of lot of fraud going on out here. So a, a lot, lot of quackery. Are, a lot of quackery. A lot of quackery. And we don't want to get people involved in any kind of quackery. Right. Uh, we want to deal with, with absolute proof. And therefore, we will have you back again 
right, to what, continue this. What's important is that you have to differentiate those alternative therapies that have a scientific basis for healing and helping and those that do not, that are purely anecdotal. Michael's group, I don't treat and I don't diagnose. I merely investigate and try to see what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And at least they can go for support sessions to Michael's group, which is, which not, is they're not selling anything. It's a nonprofit group that helps people who are HIV positive, helps them understand what options are available. Had I not seen the lab results with my own eyes, I probably would not have believed that something like this was possible. So I studied and I watched and I saw no less in the time that I was there, I saw no less than eight people completely reverse AIDS. I had never seen this in the medical community in the hospital. And then uh, Garinol was uh, implementing soft, some of the supplements, like vitamin C, like uh, many other vitamins that work directly in increasing the immune system. And uh, we had a lot of, lot of patients. Uh, they, we had good results, very good results. Uh, in fact, there were some patients that they were uh, absolutely convert from positive to negative. More or less, I, I cannot give you exactly the, how many they were, but there are 10 that I know. And uh, some of them, they are still uh, all right today. In fact, uh, in New Jersey to Dr. Radu Kramer, was uh, Saturday a patient that she was working, I can say because she uh, working in a jail. She was a policeman there and one of the patients bite her uh, and was transmitted. And she is still all right and in remission after all those years. Uh, that was uh, 1982nd, 83rd. I spoke with her Saturday, I didn't ask her. With Gary, what he did was uh, change the person's diet completely, which was what I did. We, uh, st they stopped eating as much as uh, the garbage that they were eating, the sugars and a lot of other things, anything that would lower their immune system. We put them on green juicing, we put them on supplements, and they, they did remarkably well for those who did, who followed. Not everybody would follow. Let's face it, no, not everybody is going to follow a protocol. But there are those people who did follow the protocol, and there were a few of them that really were fantastic. They did ozone. They did um, vitamin C drips. We cleansed their system as much as possible. We did stress reduction. But they were put on low dose naltrexone. They were put on many, many different things. And there are a few people that serum converted. But I can't say that everybody did because you're not going to do it because it's too much of a change. Even because they can't equate um, a diet because they've been eating it all their life with sickness. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. So that they figured, oh, I've been eating all my life. This is not going to, this is not going to change. But it, it's lifestyle. It's everything that's con connected with it. And once you make that change, it was remarkable, absolutely remarkable. I saw Gary in the hallway one day, and I said, Gary, my name is Doug Henderson, blah, blah, blah. I've listened to you for so long. I'm friends with Arthur Ashe, and he hasn't come out yet, but I'd like to be proactive and get him on one of these protocols, if this is true. And the HIPAA laws were different back then in terms of medical records. Now you can't reveal anything. So Gary took me back in his office. He showed me, I think it was five or six medical records. And it was, it was, a, it was a, not just one medical record, but for each client, each patient, he had after every three months or so, another uh, lab workup done. And so you could see the progression. And these people, according to the records, had seroconverted, had no traces of AIDS or no traces of the HIV virus in their system, which was remarkable. Looking back at the people who were there but looked at AIDS from a different perspective, challenging HIV infection in their body, but from a natural and non-toxic perspective. I've worked with people who have 700 T cells and their health isn't compromised at all and they're miserable and all they can think about what'll happen if I become demented, what'll happen if I 
I'm losing my health insurance. What will happen if I lose my job? How will I tell my mother? How will I do this? And life is totally cheated. The most important thing is I feel some hope. I feel like it's not a death sentence. Because that's what I felt I had until I started doing this on my own. And probably the thing that makes me the most angry is that my doctor still denies that this can work. I would say the quality of my life is better today than it was 10 years ago. I think I'm more focused. I have more energy. Um, I see more purpose to my life. I don't, I don't really get uh, depressed a lot. There is one thing that I want the whole world to realize that HIV is not an AIDS, a death sentence. I am living proof of that. And we, there are many, many, many friends of mine and a whole subculture of us that are just fine with no T cells. So it is not a death sentence. It is one door closing and a window opening. I felt when I first was diagnosed that this was a signal for me that I really had to change my life and that I didn't have a choice anymore. I made a decision that I could look at this as being a victim or look at it as another one of life's adventures, and I decided to look at it as an adventure. When I was diagnosed, uh, my first reaction was nausea, and then the, the next reaction, I can honestly say that was uh, a feeling that I am not going to die, I'm not going to let myself die, you know, if there's anything at all that I can do to contribute to, you know, to my being healthy and my future, then uh, I was going to try and find out what it was and, and do it. I decided that I really wanted to live, and in doing that, I decided to do anything and everything that was possible to make sure that my life would be full and that I would enjoy the moment because it was too precious. I started doing a lot of reading as far as reading my own blood work so I knew what questions to ask my doctors. Um, many of my doctors got frustrated with me. Uh, they would, uh, you know, tell me they're the authority, that they know that not to get caught up in this, but I always wanted to know. And I fired quite a few doctors. Over and over again, people come to our meetings and say something very similar to what he said. I'm feeling better than ever. AIDS was the best thing that ever happened to me. When I heard that the first time, it gave me a headache. I couldn't understand how someone can say that. But then you hear it over and over again, and you carefully understand what's being said. What's being said is the people were empowered. They took charge of their lives. The whole way of living, it's more than simply their health, but their whole relationship to their life has changed. And it's one where they're ready, willing, and able, and reliant on themselves to do whatever they need to do. A spiritual dimension of what AIDS has done for me has really put me in touch with my center, my higher power, or whatever you want to call it. It works, it's powerful. I put together a little ritual that I try to do uh, as often as I can in the mornings. It's pieces of Tai Chi and yoga and um, a Chinese exercise system called the 18 therapies, plus a little meditation. And I feel so different after I do that in the morning. It's incredible. I believe uh, spirituality has a major part to play in, in my health. And I believe my emotional state has a great, part to, a great deal to play in my um, health. If that means that you feel that you want to do acupuncture or you want to do vitamin C drip or ozone or hyperthermia or whatever, that you should be allowed to do it. Unfortunately, uh, the way things are set up, we don't allow that. You have to do it out of love, out of concern, with intelligence and with knowledge, not out of the desperation of fear because it's not going to work. You're going to be cramming all this, stuff, this, all this stuff into you and you're not going to accomplish anything. What I went back to is the traditional southern Italian diet of fresh fruits and vegetables. And uh, I went to a meeting once and I heard a man speak named Matthew Grace and he gave a seminar on natural hygiene. And I found out it's what my family has been practicing all along fresh, clean, homegrown vegetables. A physician of mine, and also that of my former business partner, uh, had seen a program on CNN about something called whole body hyperthermia. That is a treatment where the body is heated up to above a temperature of 108 degrees, which would be 42 centigrade, it, at which it is known 
from medical literature that it can kill certain types of cancer cells, <clears throat> certain types of viruses, <clears throat> and also um, possibly even the HIV virus. It also enhances and boosts the immune system. Prior to leaving, we had extensive blood work done. I had tested PCR positive, which tests for the DNA of HIV, antibody positive, P24 antigen positive, culture positive, and had a CD4 count of about 200. Today I can tell you it is 33 months later. I no longer have any of the Carposi sarcoma that I had on my thigh, down my throat, the herpes that I had in the lung that caused the cough, made me cough up blood, gone. My CMV, Epstein-Barr, gone. And what astounded the researchers over at the University of Rome and here in the United States was the fact that I went from P24 antigen positive to P24 antigen negative, and I am also now PCR negative, and I am also culture negative, which means that they cannot grow the virus in my blood any longer. Also, my immune system has come back up to normal. I now have a CD4 count of about eight to 900, but a CD8 count of about 2,800, which they can't explain and the Pasteur Institute wants to do a little work on. Talking about this visualization, you know, they know, they know down to a scientific certainty that your you know, receptor cells and neuropeptides are getting all screwed up with every bad thought you have and that's going to bring everything down too. So <coughs> meditation, I do it half an hour every morning and I'm trying to get it to half an hour every night also and uh, it's at least 50% of the battle is, is your thought process, I'm sure. In spite of the fact that out in the field, in small clinics all over the country and indeed around the world, people are finding methods of survival, of in, improving quality of life, extending the length of life, stopping opportunistic infections, and they're doing it using a variety of approaches, many of which are non-toxic, minimally toxic, that use natural medicine, and that use some strategically placed conventional drugs. But all of those approaches, because they tend not to be the high profit drugs, they're not getting federal research, and of course they're not getting private pharmaceutical money being put into them, and therefore we don't have this knowledge being systematized and spread out to the general public through the, the medical community. You've been given hard prima facie evidence from doctors, from dietitians and nurses, from patients with their medical records and scientists that I was able to seroconvert in one group 10 patients and another at the center uh, 8 patients but all of them got better even if they still remained HIV positive that no one has denied AIDS or HIV infection we simply challenged that everything coming from the so-called epicenter of AIDS uh, dogma out of Washington that it wasn't accurate that there are more humane and more scientifically valid ways of going about helping people with AIDS. So then I was called an AIDS denier. Imagine that. And those people will never apologize. They were wrong. And I've shared the truth and the proof with you. Thank you for watching. So what have we learned? We've learned these are real people who were able to get well, completely well. Now, had this been a drug that did this, I can promise you that that would have been the biggest selling drug in history that would have made front page headline news all over the world. And yet, with all the work done, seven days a week, 15 hours a day, for free, for over 12 years straight at the Tri-State Healing Center, and since then, just in my own private uh, counseling, there's not been a single mention of this. To the contrary, what has been mentioned is what's on my Wikipedia page, and that is that somehow I'm an AIDS denier. Why? Because I began to also explore and write about and produce documentaries that showed how people were profiting off this scourge, profiting off other people's suffering. Not a lot of people, small groups of people, 
And if it was known, and if they had to show that there are multiple approaches to AIDS-defining illnesses, just like there are multiple approaches to cancer and heart disease and depression, then they wouldn't have had a monopoly. They wouldn't have had over $800 billion pouring into their bank accounts. And so they had to destroy the messenger. And that's what they've done to myself, Peter Duisberg, and other people. And so that was one of the reasons I left KPFK after 33 years of being on Roy of Hollywood's overnight show, six hours every Wednesday morning from midnight to uh, 6 a.m. Because a KPFA broadcast had said that I was one of these deniers. And they didn't bother to do their homework. They're sloppy. But had they done their homework, they would have found these people, these stories, something that not Robert Gallo, not Anthony Fauci, not Luc Montagnier, who, by the way, I've been interviewed. And Luc Montagnier in his writings has stated many of the things that we used in our protocols would also help people reverse AIDS. He stated that on the record. He got the Nobel Prize unshared, not Robert Gallo, for discovering the HIV virus. And he also stated very clearly, unequivocally, unapologetically, that HIV needed cofactors. So they had the media in their pocket. They had the AIDS establishment under control. They had aligned with the pharmaceutical industry. So that's why they had to demonize those of us who were actually getting good results. On the phone now is Luann Panessi. Hi, Luann. Hello, Gary. Luann came to the Tri-State Healing Center suffering from three life ending illnesses. She didn't come because of AIDS. At the end of her treatment and the protocols that I created for her, she had reversed all three of these life-ending conditions. But she didn't stop because when she was there, she also had a chance when you're sitting there for two to three hours getting an IV drip or getting other therapies, she would speak with the other patients, including because she came in the evening Most of our AIDS patients came in the evening. They wanted the support of other people with AIDS. So she had a chance to speak with them, and she came so so interested in the progress they were making because over a period of a year, she saw them get go from near death to very vitally healthy. So she asked, could she come in? And for another year, she worked as a volunteer with the AIDS patients. And so she also had a chance to see up close their progress objectively. Mind you, she was at that point the head of nursing at Long Island Jewish Hospital and had been for 18 years. She was also an oncology nurse. She had seen how people with AIDS-defining illnesses had been treated and whatever success or failure they had in their institution. Luann, tell the audience, please, what you observed that you did not tell us in the interview that appeared in this film. Well, I was extremely curious. Obviously, having been a nurse for so many years where the only answer to AIDS were the, the drugs, and the drugs brought on side effects, and the side effects brought more misery and pain and discomfort and ultimately destruction of the patient. So I was incredibly curious about what was going on which is one of the reasons I became like a liaison between um, the, the patient and the, the physician at the center. I was there mixing their IVs. I was there with them, hearing their stories, and they all gave me permission to review their charts. And it was almost surreal to me, Gary, as a nurse administrator who has been such a staunch advocate of conventional medicine to see these results in front of my eyes, that people were steroconverting, people were healing. And I found that a lot of these patients that were diagnosed with with HIV, um, I would say just about all of them had other types of viruses, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, herpes 1, herpes 2. I was amazed that even with these with the treatments that they were getting, not only zero convert from HIV, but all these other viruses 
with serial converting as well. And I was also one of those people who began completely serial converting positive viruses, Epstein Barr, mycoplasma, herpes one, herpes two, herpes six, Paxaki. And I was absolutely stunned. And that, of course, fueled my passion even more to be with these people. They were happy, they were upbeat, they were hopeful. And this was a new, a new world for me. I suddenly saw people with AIDS through a completely different set of eyes. And boy, it was a phenomenal learning experience for me, one I'll never, ever forget. And that is when my eyes were open, Gary, to the fact that Big Pharma was running the show and we were all just pawns in the game. We were here to be beholden to the Food and Drug Administration and Big Pharma and anything they dictated. Because I remember asking you, why don't we know about this? Why isn't this out there all over the place? And that's when I learned. I learned that this isn't about stealing patients. It's about money, and it's about power, and it's about greed. So it was a real privilege for me to be with these people and to, ex- and to, be- to experience with them that powerful healing energy, changing their lifestyles, getting these integrative therapies, bio-oxidative therapies, high-dose intravenous vitamin C therapy, doses that I never heard of in my entire life. And there I was amongst them experiencing this healing with them. It was, it was an incredible privilege for me as a nurse. Uh, just a final question. In the years that you were at this Tri-State Center helping people, and we had only board-certified physicians and chiropractors, acupuncturists, Dr. Amara Gadal, the holistic dentist. We were taking care of all their different needs. Did you ever see anyone who got worse once they were on the protocols? Not one. Not one. And yet, do you remember that very tall guy, he's about 6'9", came from California, and... Uh, he asked, could he be a part of the therapy program there? And I asked him, why are you coming from California? And he said, because every single person in all of his eight support groups for the previous eight years had all died. And I said, how many people is that? And he said, about 2,000 people that had been taking the drugs all died. And he was not allowed to come to some meetings because the people who were advocating for the pharmaceutical interest of different drugs would control different support groups. And they didn't want to know about Louise Hay. They didn't want to know about vitamin C drips. All they wanted to know about was the drugs. And he said, I finally had no more people in support groups. They had died, so I came to New York because we had heard that what you were doing. Do you remember that guy? I do. I do, yeah. Hard to miss him because he had to tuck his head every time he stepped into the room. Um, But he... He was an inspiration because he had already been into health, but not a very detailed program, but at least he was doing good things. Right, and I found that each person became the support for each each of the other people, which is beautiful, beautiful to see. It's not like a lot of times when people are ill, they become self-centered, they become self-absorbed, and nothing else matters except them. In this group, everyone was supporting each other. So it was, it was beautiful to see. And it was also, Gary, that's when I learned uh, the incredible lesson that uh, the media is manipulated by Big Pharma in a big way. That was very distressing for me to learn, but it was an important lesson for me to learn. Do you remember how many people from the media showed up at the center, would spend an hour interviewing people, but never once broadcast or wrote anything? Yes, it was, was, there was. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. It was very, very curious. I was that was one of my main issues. It's like, why isn't anyone talking about this? Yes, people came and took did interviews, but nothing got out to the mainstream media. And they didn't come to the press conference. No, not a one. That was another thing that opened my eyes. I was sure that people would come combing in there. 
I was sure you were going to fill the room. Not, not a single person from the media showed up, mm-hmm. but Tony Brown of PBS, uh, Errol Caldwell of the Daily News, and uh, Bill Tatum of the Amsterdam News, uh, Bill McCrary over at Channel 5. Isn't it interesting that only African-American celebrities and media showed up, and they did report on it and did broadcast it, but it, the rest of the media simply would not cover that or pick up on it. So that is simply to let people know how powerful Big Pharma is to allow no competition for its monopoly and how how the supplicants, the syncophants within the media, including Pacifica, including on KPFK and KPFA, allowed censorship, allowed non, uh, non-researched non ad hominem attacks. But at the end of the day, here's the proof that people just had 31 minutes to see it, and it could have been three hours long. We just took a sample of the people who zero converted and yet, you would think that no one's ever seroconverted with all the diseases and the HIV virus, but we showed it, we proved it, now the audience knows the truth. That won't mean that we'll get an apology, we won't, but at least you were there, you were part of the medical team, you saw it firsthand. Final thought. Well, it would be, it, it's wonderful, Gary, that you have been so tireless and so ruthless about exposing the truth, not just with this but with every facet of health care, of the planet, of politics. you And we are so blessed to have you here and during our lifetimes to expose this kind of truth. This is what people need. That's why your audience is growing so rapidly, because you've got the truth. And people, I even joined WBAI thinking that I might make a difference. And that's when I discovered that they had these groups of people who were absolutely not interested in the truth. In fact, they wanted to suppress the truth. Very, very distressing to me. And that's why I didn't stay with, uh, with WBAI, because I saw that there was, there was hypocrisy going on there and denial of the truth. So well, I moved on. Today we have it. The people have shared it. And there's going to be more to come. Thank you very much, Luan Panessi.